Recording in progress. Good morning. Good morning, guys. It's uh, Tuesday. Yes, it's Tuesday. Tuesday night for us, Wednesday morning for you guys. Yes. You know what that means? I bet it's Tuesday evening. Exactly. <laughs> Bible study tonight, every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, we have a Bible study, guys. Mm -hmm. um, we finished the last one. Not sure where we're going with this one, but it's Sharon's birthday. Not today for us, but for you guys, it is. Oh, my God, it is. huh? Yes. So I'm going to have a 30 minute Bible study, guys, because we yeah, we're gonna have a 30 minute Bible study because Tomas is bringing dinner for your birthday. He is? Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. Oh, thank you, Tomas. So, guys, we, we will have worship. We're going to have a regular, you know, the two songs we do. But the Bible study will be a 30-minute Bible study. And then we're going to end it that way. We can, you know, <laughs> it's her birthday, but she has to work. And then Bible study. So I just want to have a 30-minute study. That way we can just enjoy and celebrate her life. Oh, that's really nice of him. Thank you, Tomas. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 48. 48? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 48 years old. 48, guys. The 48. Two more years to the 5 0. So Sharon feels awkward with this setup because this is how I've been doing the interviews. Yeah, it's with a laptop in front of me, and I just yeah. kind of feel like. So, like, weird. we don't have the things, we have the bam. We have this the microphone there and um i feel weird she's not really feeling it no guys i'm not yeah. so she's like this is what you do the interviews with <laughs> yep because the when i do the interviews they're through zoom so i have to do it through the laptop well i mean i could do it through the phone but it's more complicated to record through the zoom to actually host the zoom through the through a phone I know, but you should stick to that for that. And we I should just wanted continue. to try it out. There's nothing wrong with trying something out. We should continue doing what we normally do. Nothing wrong with trying it out. The way we normally do it. Remember you used to cause earthquakes to happen all the time? Yes. I thought you were going to do it again. Mm. See my pretty. See, now I don't know where I don't know which way to do anything. You don't know which way the flowers are. <laughs> right there <laughs> the flowers are right there you don't know which way to turn You're right there <laughs> right there anyways so um my little flowers that they gave me on sunday they're so beautiful as you guys know you didn't get a devotional on um monday morning and you didn't get a devotional these emotional yeah you didn't, You're, are you emotional or you something get a devotional tuesday morning either so this is going to be a three-hour devotional guys yes to make up for all that lost time i'm not doing a three-hour devotional why not because so anyways i want to talk about something you do i do okay i actually do bring it on you know, um, you always talk about um, you always talk about perspective and yes. everything, which is really really important, guys. Um, so I went to work today, and um, and when I went in, you know, I I. I didn't really go in with much ingredients because we were in Tahoe. So I never had a chance to really call in ahead of time and say, Hey, listen, these are the ingredients that I need. This mm -hmm. is a menu that I have. Um, so I didn't have a chance guys. Um, and a lot of the times I kind of wing it because I I'm like, okay, maybe I'll just go in and guys, I'm, I'm pretty good about, if I go into the fridge and I see stuff, I'm like, okay, this is what I can do. Um, I kind of grew up 
learning to just invent stuff or just knowing that I can put stuff together with, you know, with whatever's available. Yeah. And I'm very, very good at just making whatever I, with what I have. And um, when I went in today, I had a really, really hard time <laughs> um, trying to come up with something. And so I was like, well, they, and then they told me, well, the cook went to the grocery store on Sunday so that he had stocked up. And so I was like, well, let me go to back to the pantry and I'll take a look around and everything. And, and I was having a really, really hard time. So then I went to the, to the fridge and I looked at the menu and I said, let me look at his menu and let me see what he has planned for the week. And looking at the menu, what he had planned and what he has planned. And, um, and it, it gave me an idea. When you see people's thoughts down on paper, mm -hmm. um, it gives you an idea of how people think sometimes, you know? Yeah. Um, it shows you their insight, their insight. Absolutely. Their plans. When you see their menus for a cook, yeah. you know, for a cook, you, you're able to see the way they think um, their preparation, the way they prep, they, the way they think and everything. So when I was able to see his menu, I was able to open up the fridge and I was able to be able to see his form of thinking, his preparation and what he thought. And I opened up the fridge and I was like, okay, there's not much in here and there's not much there. So I went back to the pantry and I was having a really hard time. And so I came to one conclusion after going back and forth, walking back to the freezer, walking back to the fridge, walking back to the pantry, pantry. I went back and forth as I was going through everything. And I came to one conclusion. And I finally realized that I realized where the person's heart was. Yeah. And, and I just had to, I had to sit there for a moment. I actually sat on the stool for a little while and I realized that if a person's heart, if a person's heart is not in it, then it will never reflect on what they do. That applies to everything. Yeah, and it really does. And if it does not show in their cooking, it does not show, then the person receiving it or anything will not feel it either. And I was able to understand why, um, why the people or why certain people were feeling a certain way or... Um, why they were not feeling the love and the food that they were receiving. Yeah. And, and I really began to feel a certain way. Um, and I thought to myself, you know, I actually want to meet this person because I, you know, I don't like to hear when somebody says, you know, we don't like that person's food or we don't like, you know, we like when you come, we like when you come, we can't wait for you to be here or anything because I don't, I don't like that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't like it because you want to see others succeed mm -hmm. and there's a root cause, you know, 
Yeah. There's a root cause and, and where there's a root cause, there's a heart issue. And, you know, at the, at the end of the day, we should always want the best for the outcome, which is the client, you know, because our main goal, our, our main objective, you know, is for these clients to, um, to be able to succeed in their, to succeed in what it is that they're there to do, which is to get better for them to leave with, um, to leave rehabilitated and, you know, and to be rehabilitated means mind, body, and soul, everything completely, Yeah, you know, and, and that's important because what good does it do that if you go somewhere and, you know, and to, to be able to, a lot of the times when you're an addict and everything, the first thing that you go to is either smoking or food, but it'd be better for them to have nourishment, food nourishment, you know, and when you're going to have nourishment, it should be good, good food. Because when you're putting in the bad stuff in there, then, you know, all you're doing is gaining weight, which gaining weight and all of that is only going to lead to depression. It's going to lead to health problems. So why not do something good for you, for yourself? Um, And, you know, I just, I just notice, you know, um, I just, you know, I just started to think, you know, um, perspective has to change in this person's heart, you know, and it's, it's so crazy because I see the joy in everything, the demeanor and everything change in the atmosphere when I go just in two days. Yeah. And it's crazy because it, that shouldn't happen just for those two days. Yeah. You know, um, different, same subject, different thing. You know, you're talking about cooking. Yeah. Um, back in the day, um, I knew um, a movie producer. And um, like you said, you said something. You said when you see their, what did you say? When you read their, what did you say? With their menu. When their menu, you can see their heart. You yeah. can see that it lets you see and understand kind of their, their, work their motive. Ethic, their, their work motive. ethics, yeah. I knew this guy that um, he had an opportunity to produce movies that were going to go out nationwide. And you can tell that money was the motive, not the art, because it's like you should never hear when you shoot a scene, you should never hear the words, that's good enough. Mm-mm. like this is gonna be on film forever yeah you should never use the words it's good enough you know and it lets you see the motive yeah and and you know like okay i did always with you the christian movie after i you know i became a christian i got out of prison i did this movie didn't have the best of equipment but i'll be honest with you every scene I would be like, what's the best angle that this scene? And, and you know, I'm not Steven Spielberg. I'm not George Lucas, you know what I mean? But the passion was, I cared about this movie, you know? Like, of course I want people to buy it, of course, you know? But I cared. I, had, I, I cared about what was going to be um, made from it, you know? It's, it's like the cooking. These are ingredients, the camera, the mic the actor, the, it's all ingredients. Yeah. What's the best way to present this to the best of my ability and the ability of my equipment? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I've seen people just throw things out there. Same thing, you know, music videos with 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 everything, everything, you know, people, the way people work on, on um, uh, carpenters or whatever. How many times have you had somebody... Um, 
come to a home and say, Hey, I need this, get this fixed. And then they start tearing it down. They're like, man, who built this? Yeah. Somebody they, just slapped this together. They see corners cut. They see yeah. all kinds of Mickey yeah. Mouse work. Yeah. And they notice it because they have a passion to do it right. Yeah. To do it with excellence, you know? And I mean, that, that seeps into ministry. That seeps into, into everything. It's like, what's the motive behind it? You know, um, whether it's evangelizing or preaching or teaching children, you know, where's your heart at? You know, and it's funny because when, when the Michael Jordan goes back to the high school, you know, the, the teachers all want to say, Oh, I was his teacher. I was, his teacher. you know what I mean? Like you want those bragging rights, but how do you know the Michael Jordan isn't there now or the next Billy Graham isn't yeah, there now absolutely. or the next, you have no idea. Matter of fact, what if, what if the way you teach them would determine whether they'll be great or not? Mm-hmm. What if their potential could have been unlocked? You know, it, it's just, yeah, it goes all the way around. You know, we have to, the, I, I think that's, it goes back to the scripture. I think that's why Jesus says, everything you do in word or deed, do it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because if we're, so basically what he's saying is, okay, everything you do, um, is it good enough to put my name on it? Yeah. Man, can you imagine if you had a Jesus stamp and you knew that he's going to inspect it? Mm. Because honestly, then no believer, Christian, whether in the church or outside the church, your workplace or wherever, you should be able to say, Lord, I'm going to put a stamp on this relationship because everything I'm doing is in you or this job or this project or this whatever. Um, you know how, like, um, I remember we went to Costco one time and they have the stakes and then they have, like, they're different ratings. I can't remember what they are, but, like, there'll be a ribeye and it'll be X amount of money and then they'll have a higher grade and it costs more money, but it has a higher stamp, like some USDA, I don't know, I don't know what they are, but um, they have official stamps where they're, they're rated better, you know, and um, think about it, everything we do, man, can the Lord stamp it? Yeah, can you put a stamp of approval on it? Yeah, because, you know, you, you're feeding people at a rehab, um, yeah, it's not fine dining. It's not a five-star restaurant in San Francisco on Geary Boulevard. It's a rehab. But what does the Lord say? He says, when you feed them, you're feeding me. Yeah. So what would, <laughs> imagine Jesus shows up and sits at that table. Mm. Are you going to give him frozen food? No. Are you, are you gonna, what are you, you going to give? give? Him the best. You're going to give him the best. Yeah. And he, he'll flip it and say, well, when you give them the best, you're, you're giving, giving it, it to me. me. Yeah. You know, and that, that should weigh heavy, guys. And whatever it is that you do, that should weigh heavy on you. If you're a believer in Christ, are you giving your best? You know, um, you know, it, 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 it broke my heart because I guess there's somebody new there that um, I guess still hadn't even met me. And, you know, he, he actually, before this today, you know, he was like um, saying, what is this? Is this prison food? Oh, really? Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and it's, it's crazy. Before, he was saying that before. Before today. Yeah. Yeah, I guess he had said it in a, in one of the meetings, you know, saying that it had been prison food and and um and he had said that even some prison food was even better than that. And you know, it's yeah. You know, it's I don't know. But I I mean, we should never get so lazy or we should never get so tired um of doing our best just in, in everything that we do. But like you said, you, you want to meet this person because 
maybe there's a reason maybe you know i i I, want to give the benefit of the doubt that's why absolutely because i really believe that there's potential um Mm -hmm. you know because i i corrected one of the young ladies today and i said listen and i said maybe he just doesn't know maybe he doesn't know and i said in in Maybe we just need to teach. Sometimes people just need to learn, Mm -hmm. you know, and um, I think everybody has uh, the potential to learn. And um, then then the ball's in their court. Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody has the potential to learn um, to do a little bit more, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think if if people have the potential to learn to do a little bit more, if they don't know, it's one thing, but maybe if they're willing to learn, if they have a teachable yeah. spirit, if somebody has a teachable spirit, man, then, then I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for us to be like, Hey, listen, um, maybe we can do this or maybe we yeah. can do that, you know, um, because there's so much more that, that you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, man, the people there are amazing, honey. The, 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 the staff is amazing. The people are amazing. Um, you got to meet one of the young men today, you know, that, that was just so happy to meet you. Um, people there are just so eager to want to change their lives and excited about it. And th- I think everybody's, everybody's excitement should match there, yeah. you know? you know, from the mm-hmm. the people, from the staff, everybody. And that's the wonderful thing, like the counselors and, and, you know, everybody's, everybody matches. Yeah. So even the person cooking the food should match. Our hearts should all be matching because we, we should all be excited for one another because mm-hmm. of, of the, the lives that are being saved, you know, and the, and the hearts that are being changed. Um, we should be so excited about the lives that are, that are being encouraged and changed because that's, that's like a big deal. Well, the, the, the very fact of, of what type of work, it's a rehab. Yes. A rehab is helping people rebuild their lives. So that, that passion, that passion needs to extend to even the kitchen absolutely um you it's know, like every every little thing is yeah. is a life lesson there yeah. like every opportunity is a life lesson even when the women go in there and wash a dish mm-hmm. is an opportunity to minister you know um serving food is an opportunity to minister every moment is an opportunity for something yeah there's certain jobs like that um those rehab places the the ones that are physical rehabilitation if you have no compassion for people that's not a job you need to be at these these are people are going through things yeah um nurses you know in hospitals pastors Mm -hmm. you know i mean if if you don't care about your congregation Uh, all you caring about is your salary all you care about is what you're going to get every month um you're in the wrong life you're in the wrong Mm -hmm. you know uh i don't want to say career because you know being a pastor shouldn't be a career but some people unfortunately see it that way and um shouldn't be there yeah same like hospice yeah same thing there's certain places that you just can't you you have to have a heart of compassion you know what i mean and and if you don't shouldn't be there you know um go be a forklift driver go be a crane operator where you're by yourself you know and you don't have have to you don't got to do with with nobody um you know same thing i mean even okay even as simple as when i did uber uh they would uh tell me a lot of people they'd be like man thank you you know you're you were uh, you're a good driver and and you're pleasant you wouldn't believe how rude some drivers are I was like why why yeah this is you <laughs> it's like these these drivers would get mad that a stranger was in their car it's like you're you, picking people up <laughs> you are picking people up and some people are going to be hurried some are going to be stressed some are going to the hospital some are going they're tired after work if you don't understand that you know just man maybe you should just 
not work at all. You know, even Uber, I understood that everything I did in word and deed, do it in the name of Jesus. I need to be the ambassador and representation of Jesus in that car when I was driving Uber. 23,000 steps today. Not bad. Did you hear me? Yes. What did I say? <laughs> I got you her. need to be you need to be the we need to be the ambassador the ambassador and that uber because we could be the only face of jesus that people yes. will see and that uber so anyways guys that's our devotion of, for today um, um join us tonight for a 30 minute bible study uh every wednesday night we do it at seven o'clock Pacific Standard Time? Is that California time? Yes, I don't know. Seven o'clock. And um, make sure you subscribe because that way you get the notifications every single Wednesday and every single Friday with Pastor Al and every single Sunday for Sunday morning service. What so, are we eating? I don't know yet. What is he making? I don't know yet. He didn't tell me. It's going to be food, not spread. It's going to be food. Yes, no spread. Please, no spread. So, uh, all right, guys. All right, guys. We love you guys very much. And I will see you guys mañana. Hasta luego. All right, Al guys. rato. Bye, guys. Bye.